I'm going to introduce the Abacus series here. We're going to start off with a modal analysis of a cantilever beam, something real simple. But before we get into it, I kind of want to go over what a modal analysis is and why it's important for a designer. So modal analysis is essentially used to determine the natural frequencies and mode shapes of a structure. That is the vibration characteristics. So why is this modal analysis important for a designer? Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it helps us identify the resonant frequencies and we want to avoid those in our designs so that we don't basically vibrate our structure apart. Also it gives us an idea of how the design will respond to different dynamic loads via the mode shapes. So modal analysis theory is can be real complicated on the surface, but it really, if you think of in terms of a mass spring damper system, it gets a little bit easier. So this is our general equation of motion. You essentially have your inertia term, your damping term, your stiffness term, and then a forcing function as shown here on our single degree of freedom mass spring damper system. So for modal analysis, you don't include forces. We don't, uh, we consider Essentially, it becomes free damp vibration when you elim eliminate the force term. And you can see your damping frequency is actually a function of your natural frequency multiplied by the square root of 1 minus your damping ratio. In practice, damping ratio is really small, less than 5%. And in the aerospace and defense industry, it can we tend to use 2.5%. So if you put that in the equation, well, you find out that actually your damping term you can neglect it. It's not really that important for most applications. So a modal analysis essentially reduces down to free undamped vibration case where your natural frequency or your uh, is a function of your stiffness right here and your mass. So simple enough So some key takeaways as we go through and I demonstrate this modal analysis and abacus of a cantilever beam are really there's no external forces involved when you're building a modal analysis. You don't even include any forces on it. But mass and stiffness are important. So if you have a structure that has masses hanging off of it, you have to include those. Also, just to reiterate what I stated in the first slide, a modal analysis is used to determine the mode shapes and natural frequencies of a structure. That's it. And also, a modal analysis is important because it's a precursor for dynamic analysis such as vibration and shock, but <clears throat> it cannot predict the stress or deflection of a structure. So those outputs that you get in Abacus, uh, the values of deflection and stress are not important, but the mode shapes are. So let's go ahead and step through an example in Abacus how to set this up and then we'll move on to um, more advanced topics through this series. So this is Abacus. We're going to build a cantilever model and run a modal analysis on it just as a simple example. So the first thing I like to do when I get into Abacus is I like to work in my native CAD environment. So. Abacus has an option here. You go to Tools, Options. You can go down here and change your mouse configuration to SolidWorks, ProEngineer, NX, any of these, um, so that when you do go from your CAD to your Abacus environment, um, it's the same mouse functions. So I use ProEngineer, so that's what I'm going to select. Another thing I like to do is I don't like this blue background, so I'm going to change it. So you go to um, View Graphics Options and then change your viewport background. I like to change it to white. Apply and there we have it. Okay, so the first step is to build our cantilever beam. So this is our part module. This is where we develop our parts. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do a uh, cantilever beam, just something simple. Um, it'll take us to its sketch environment. I'm just going to draw a rectangular profile, add some dimensions here. Just going to make it pretty small for now. So 
so 0.5 in width, 0.3 in height, and I'll just middle mouse click and make it uh, 24 inches long. So there's our simple beam, um, not much to it. So Abacus, you can just walk through from the module. It kind of takes you step by step. The next thing we want to do is define our properties. So one thing I like to do before I get into Abacus is I like to create an Excel spreadsheet with all the materials and parts I'm going to use. Um, I include parts, material, the density, Elastic, mod elastic modulus, Poisson ratio, and um, one thing you need to be aware of in Abacus is it's not really, it has no sense of units, so what you have to do is you have to go into the Abacus manual and it defines your units, your length, forces, mass, densities, all this in uh, a table, handy table, and just, I work in terms of uh, I guess customary units, US units, and so um, just be aware that density is not given in your typical mass per unit volume. It's actually divided by gravity. So the density of aluminum 6061 is 0 0.098 pound inches cubed, pound per inches cubed. So I want to convert that to the correct abacus units by dividing it by gravity. So I'm going to go ahead and divide it by 386.1, which is gravity in units of inches per second squared. So that's my abacus density that I'm going to use. I'm going to so um, first step, just start from the top left, create our material, aluminum 6061. For abacus model, we want to define our elasticity. This will basically define our stiffness. So it has our Young modulus, which is tabulated here. Poisson ratio, which is 0.33. It's isotropic, so I'm going to leave it like that. And then we're going to define, since we're doing a modal analysis, we need to define our mass density. Mass is always important in a modal analysis, and it's really important for anything that you do. So, um, yeah, so just density and elasticity are, are really important. So now I've defined what I've needed to to run a modal analysis. Now I want to create a section. Solid section. I'm just going to call it aluminum 6061 and I'll supply a better naming convention as we move forward into more complicated models uh, in the future. So we defined our section. Now we got to assign our section to uh, basically a, a material or a part so this is going to be our cantilever beam set we're going to assign it the aluminum 6061 and once it turns green everything is good to go so now we go into the assembly module uh, we typically have an assembly of parts but I'm just have, have one part so I'm just going to put in the cantilever beam that's it And then that's all we need to define there. Um, also in the assembly model, your coordinate system is important. We're just going to keep it simple. Let's go around and just use the default coordinate system. <clears throat> Next, we want to define our modal analysis step. So we'll call this our modal step. And it's actually going to be a linear perturbation frequency step. And so you have a box here that's got a lot of different things. Um, we're just going to test our frequencies up to 2,000 hertz. And we're also, we're not going to use uh, any, we're going to uncheck 
both of these right here. Uh, we don't want to project damping operators and we don't want to use sim based linear dynamic procedures because it limits some outputs. So that's how we're going to define our analysis right now. Then we're going to go into interaction tab and we don't have any parts we need to connect or any contacts we need to assign so um, we're going to skip past this and then in a modal analysis you do not need to define a load if you remember what I said in the presentation so this is not important but what is important is our boundary condition so we're going to create a boundary condition and because this is a um, cantilever beam we're going to uh, assign it a fixed boundary condition on this face right here So we're going to restrict all six degrees of motion on that face. And you can see there it shows that we have constrained this face on our cantilever beam. So now we want to mesh the part. So um, at Abacus is a little bit funny. You mesh it by part. So we have to click this part tab and then we have to select each part and mesh it. Um, we're just going to use uh, we're going to assign a the default seed size, seed size for now and then just go ahead and mesh the part. Um, we're going to use the uh, default um, elements here. In this case we're using C3D8R elements. Um, you can go look that up. Uh, that's what we're going to use for now and then oftentimes I'll check our mesh uh, highlight problem areas um, looks good right now uh, which you would expect it to be for this simple of a model next we want to go create our job so we'll go ahead and um, create a job modal okay we're going to use our model one find in the tree and we're just going to use the default options here and um, one thing I do want to note um, that I skipped is we have to go back to our step and we have to create a field output so for our modal um, we're going to create just uh, the default output um, in this case um, what you tend to do for modal analysis is you want to report the um, stresses because those be carried forward to the dynamic analysis like random vibration and shock and also you want to um, output your displacements um, specifically just uh, their translations and rotations is good enough for modal. So that's our history out, our field output, which our field output is basically what we visualize in the viewport. Our history output is just going to be data that's that's output to like uh, what you do is you'd go in and and uh, select some parameters you want and then output it into a um, CSV file or text file but we're not doing that in this case so once we've defined those things we've created our job and we should be able to run it um, I want to save this first uh, because a lot of times in Abacus uh, you can have crashes so just be aware of that so we'll go ahead and go to job manager and submit the job and it'll run a little bit so it took a little bit of time to run that but it says it's completed so then we can go to the results and what we want to do is we want to look at our modal um, so you can see your outputs here um, these stresses don't mean anything but the shape is important 
Um, so our first mode is 1.72 hertz and we can step through those step by step and look at the mode shapes up to 2000 hertz. So you can see we get a lot of natural frequencies that are um, the result of this analysis. It's just a cantilever beam um, just uh, carrying its own weight essentially. Um, and so that's how you run a modal analysis and uh, so this is the first step. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Adios.